Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passive Money. You know who everybody is. You know, Alex Kirby, which way, what have you. Let me adjust the scene. I ain't moving my seat up, I promise. Uh, I know I'm short, so I'm going to tell nobody. All right, here we go. So um, today we want to talk about something that I'm glad is starting to be more or of a forefront picture. Um, Alex, me, you talked about this months ago. I mean, I want to say months ago, like January, February. This is when nobody was talking about it in uh, for the state of Florida. We was talking about how escrow payments is going to, that's going to be a big harmful factor for the housing market in Florida. You know, everybody's thinking, oh, housing prices are going to go down or, oh, we're going to have the uh, two, 2008 financial crisis again, where it's going to be a whole bunch of people that uh, bought houses that can't afford houses. And we talked about that in nauseam, how most people are on, on fixed rate debt under 4%. But the thing that we brought up, uh, I believe it was January or February. I can't remember the video, but we talked about this, uh, how escrow payments is going to be the outlying factor. And Alex, as you know, about two years ago, uh, I talked about this with you um, about buying rental properties in Florida, why I pivoted out of Florida, because I saw this crisis coming up and the, the payments and things are going on like that. But before we get into that, so today we're going to talk about the, uh, the insurance crisis that is in the state of Florida. And Alex, before I let you chime in, I want to just bring up this article that came out it came out on the 15th of August, uh, but it's been other create content creators, other news articles about this. But I want to bring this one up because it came from the Tampa Bay Times, you know, one of our local newspapers. It says uh, Florida's company how uh, homeowners insurance market is exposing one of the state's longest running flaws. It's reliance on a single company to certify the majority of the state's insurers. For the last few weeks, state regulators and Governor Ron DeSantis' administration have been scrambling to contain the fallout after the state's primary rating agency, Ohio-based uh, Demotech, Inc., warned of downgrades to roughly two dozen insurance companies, according to the state. Last our last paragraph, and then I'll let you get in. The, uh, the downgrades would have triggered a meltdown of the state's housing market, a pillar of Florida's 1.2 trillion dollar economy and without the ratings a million floridians could be left scrambling to seek new insurance policies possibly trigger triggering a housing crisis in the middle of hurricane season and must before the november election so now this again this article came out in march the author of this article was alex harris um and lawrence mauer of the tampa bay times and the miami herald and with that, I mean, Alex, you have properties. I mean, you live in Florida and you have rental properties in Florida. So tell me what you're seeing in the market in general, just from your perspective. What I the first one that I think uh, actually I noticed wasn't insurance, but it was property taxes. Um, I think right. that was the first jump in escrow that I saw. My property taxes had gone from. Uh, roughly two thousand jumped all the way up to five thousand five hundred. So, you know, what's the what's the time span? Uh, so this was actually say about a year and a half. So, um, you could say two years, two tax years. Um, so it had doubled and or more than doubled, almost tripled, and uh, more than in just two tax years. Um, and then I had, so over three years, I've seen my insurance go from about 800 to 1300. Um, so that's nearly double. Um, and that's in, that's in central Florida. And I mean, I only expect it to continue to accelerate or grow at a pretty, uh, high percentage pace, um, but I won't know until the following year. Um, but uh, you've got more properties than me in Florida. And uh, we talked about one. Um, you actually made it work, though. Uh, they try to double your insurance, right? And then you uh, did some uh, combative skills and then got it, got it back down to uh, what you were just paying, right? 
we're close to what I was paying. Um, one thing that I do I always implore people, especially in Florida, to get a um uh wind mitigation report, get a wind mitigation report that'll help you a long ways of getting that insurance premium down on the property that Alex is referencing. Uh my insurance went from twenty three hundred and they wanted to increase it to what was it fifty six hundred, I believe. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. And then um I did the wind mitigation report, paid about $250 for that. And then after the wind mitigation came back, because I just put a new roof on there maybe two years ago, um, it came back and then my insurance came up to $2,500. So about a two dollars $300 jump from there. Uh, but so that's that's one way to combat it. But and all in all, let's just look at it. Uh, Florida's homeowner insurance premium or policies or how much people are paying for insurance is three times the national average. The national average is $1,700 a, a year for homeowner insurance. In Florida, we pay in $3,500, $4,600. For the most part, that's the average going on. Now, if you get to these coastal areas, especially on the west coast of Florida, excuse me, the east coast of Florida, especially around these beach towns, they're paying seven, eight, nine for homeowner's insurance. So it can get very pricey. And... And I'm glad people are starting to bring this to the forefront and start talking about it more. Uh, like I said, we talked about this uh, a while back because, I mean, I just seen it coming. I just seen it, especially having multiple properties in the state and seeing how the insurance premium was increasing. And that's why I am a huge, huge proponent for investors to be very aggressive when you're acquiring property, especially in Florida. You want the lowest of the lowest property you can because escrow payments will jump up on you. So like properties in Pensacola, I remember when I first bought the property, my property taxes was like $835 a year. Now my property taxes are two grand a year. My insurance was like $960 a year. Now I'm paying $3,200 a year. And this is only like a four-year, five-year span here. And then of course, you know, other properties, insurance is just going crazy. But if I was one of those people that was looking to pay twenty and thirty thousand dollars and forty thousand dollars over ask, especially in the low interest rate environment, and I was paying over really what the house is worth, let's be honest, what the house is worth, and then now I'm paying that, even though I got the low interest rate, let's say three, four percent interest rate, now my escrow is uh my escrow payments are you know doubling, tripling over the next two or three years. They, these properties that people was buying that maybe was cash flowing, and I know a lot of them wasn't even cash flowing during that COVID era when people was buying because it's paying exorbitantly higher than what it was worth. Now these people are not cash flowing at all. There's no way in hell they're cash flowing it now, especially with the interest rate and the uh, insurance rates going up as high as they are. So that was one of my main reasons why I said I was pivoting, pivoting out of Florida. I didn't sell what I had because... I got them extremely attractive prices. I have little to no debt on none of the properties that I have here in Florida, but that's why I pivoted out because I saw this big catastrophic event happening, especially on the escrow side, because I've been absorbing that already. But because I was diligent and I was aggressive on uh, buying the properties that I didn't pay over, I wasn't paying, uh, I wasn't even paying asking price, it allowed me to cushion that buffer and you know with raising the rents over time you know slowly and methodically over time my tenants are still my properties are still cash flowing my tenants are still you know still getting the same services and things that i was providing when the rates was not this high when escrow was not this high because i was able to buy at an effective and good price to make the property work for me over the long term and i wasn't thinking of the short-term gratification of it so with you being in the florida market um prior to covid had you always seen insurance uh go up maybe not exponentially like we're seeing now but had it always gone up at a pretty high rate or are you are you just well, seeing these last 3 years being the the biggest jump in escrow payments uh well no well it wasn't insurance rates so remember, I was in Texas before I came to Florida. Right. And I built a property, you know, I built a property, a new subdivision. So I, I understand why your property taxes 
bloom so fast. Cause you was in a you was in a subdivision with hardly any properties. You know, they was you was probably paying the property taxes on just land, and then now you got a solid structure there. So it ballooned, and then property taxes bloomed again, and then now it's an exorbitant impact for you. Uh, but that was the same thing that happened to me in Texas. So I went from paying like I say nine seventy three a month, and I had fixed. And I was fixed six percent. This was December two thousand seven. By two thousand ten, I was paying fourteen hundred dollars a month, and it was only it was escrow. It was property taxes going up, insurance went up a little bit, but property taxes went up big. And then, so when I was talking to you a couple of years ago about I'm leaving the Florida market, as far as buying more rentals and going somewhere else, it was because I seen the values of properties and how much people was you know migrating to Florida and just paying any amount of price, paying way over ask, and that was going to bring the value of the properties higher. So which in turn was going to bring the property tax higher. And I already knew the impact of that. It would make your mortgage payment higher on a month to month basis. And then you add in the fact that uh, before hurricanes, I, I don't know why people acting like the last two or three years is the first time hurricanes ever hit Florida. Florida has always been a magnet for hurricanes since the beginning of the time. Let's just say that. People don't want to bring this up, but I'll bring it up because I didn't take advantage of it. Um, when back in 2000, I want to say 14, 15, when everybody in Florida was getting new rules and they were sticking the insurance company with the payment and you had these people scamming, getting new rules, talking about hail damage and all that. And then the insurance companies trying to fight it, but the, the lawyer fees and stuff was costing too much. That is what started, that's what started the ball rolling downhill in the state of Florida, where these insurance companies became insolvent. It wasn't the hurricanes. So when you add the hurricanes and the damage you do on year end, you you're out basis for Florida, and you add in that big, that big amount of money, six, seven billion dollars for roofs that they had to repair or or uh lawyer fees that they had to use to try to fight some of these claims that was going over the whole state of Florida. That was the domino effect of it. On top of the hurricanes, that's what caused a lot of insurance companies to become insolvent. A lot of companies just say, damn this, we're leaving Florida because it's the Wild West. So I was seeing all this just manifest in front of my eyes. And I wasn't going to sit here and wait to somebody in the news tell me what was going on. I've already seen it. So that's why I seen this stuff happening. And then that's why I was like, oh, well, let me just stop buying in Florida because it's going to be really hard, especially when you get to 2020 when prices going up and people in this bidding wars and people paying you know 30 40 50 thousand dollars over ass and excuse me the rent that they're receiving is way below what the property would even ask for and then people paying these prices that's why i was like let me get out of here and let me just pivot to another state that the prices seem reasonable is understandable and they're not having this big uh inflation Pick up in home prices and I'll just start working working there. And that's what it is. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, uh, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.